All right, hi everybody, how's it going? And welcome to another video. Now, I want to do another movie review today, and the movie that I'm going to be reviewing is the 1976 horror film called Burnt Offerings. This movie stars Oliver Reed, Karen Black, and Betty Davis. Now, I've heard about this movie for a while, never really took the time to watch it. I heard that it was slow moving, or they refer to movies like this as slow burn movies, I think is the term. Anyways, I heard it was kind of slow moving. I wasn't sure if I really wanted to see it or not, but I just decided to see it, and I really liked this film. I really thought it was good. This is, and I guess maybe you could call it a psychological horror film, or, you know, like a haunted house type horror film. Anyways, this is a very good movie, and I would consider this to be kind of like a proto-Shining. I know Stephen King was influenced by this film. He was a fan of both the book, because a book came out three years before the movie in 1973, and I know Stephen King was a fan of the book, and you could see where this influenced The Shining. You could see where the influence is. And like I said, I would consider it like a proto-Shining. You know, I think Stephen King, although he didn't copy this to make The Shining, but, you know, it's almost like, you know, he was very heavily influenced by, like, the idea of this movie. And then he kind of went and made it better, essentially. I do think The Shining's a better movie. But uh, I, you could kind of tell he thought, well, you know, how could I make something like this better? And, you know, he did, but nonetheless, it's still a great film. Anyways, I'm going to talk about the film. There will be spoilers in this review. So if you haven't seen it yet, I am going to have spoilers in it. And, uh, this right here, this was the uh, movie poster that came out for it. Burnt Offerings. Got this big old Victorian era house. Now, the movie starts out, you have two characters, Ben, Marion, and Ben and Marion have a son. Ben is played by Oliver Reed. Marion is played by Karen Black. And the acting in this movie is just superb. I mean, was not a big budget film. I think it was about $2 million to make. But even though it was that low budget, they still did a very good job with the acting and creating all this eerie atmosphere. It was a very atmospheric film. And just goes to show that you, know, you can make a great movie the low budget, if you really know what you're doing and you're making like a horror film or one of these psychological kind of horror films. Anyways, the characters of Ben, Marion, and their son are going to this big, large Victorian house because Marion saw like an ad for it and she responded to the ad. So they go and meet the owners the owners and one of the owners are like an elderly brother and sister. One of them is played by Burgess Meredith, kind of around that time. I think he played Mickey in the first Rocky film, kind of around that time. And, uh, you know, they talk about the house. They say, yes, you could rent this house for the whole summer for nine hundred dollars. And they're like, oh, that's great. You know, absolutely. We'll we'll do this. And uh, the character of Ben is kind of like, well, what's the catch? There's got to be a catch here. And they're like, well, the one catch is we do have a mother. She's 85 years old. She's going to be in her room and it's locked. The only thing you have to do is just bring her food three times a day and that's it. So they're like, oh, oh okay, that's, that's fine. And... Uh, the Ben character's like, could I bring my aunt? And she stays with us. And his aunt, you know, Elizabeth, who's 
played by Betty Davis. So they agree, yes. And, you know, after maybe like a day or two, or you're not sure exactly how long, they then come to stay in the house. Now, one eerie thing I do want to add is the brother and sister talk a little bit about the house, and they mention that the house is very old, it's been around a long time, and it's probably immortal. Now, I thought that was strange that you would refer to a house as immortal. That immediately caught my attention. Why would you say that about a house? And then at the same time, you see this Burgess Meredith character looking out the window, and he sees the son of the couple playing on this gazebo, and he falls down and he hurts his knee. And you see that this Burgess Meredith character kind of takes delight in the fact that this happened. You're kind of wondering why. You know, that that's kind of creepy. Why, why, why would that be the case? And then as that happened, there was a plant that suddenly became rejuvenated. And so then you're kind of wondering, okay, is there some sort of a strange energy in this house? What's going on? So anyways, it comes the time to where they're going to stay in this house. So they do. And, you know, uh, immediately, like, you don't really see too many strange things happening. You don't see like any poltergeist activity happening right away, but you do notice that this Marion character all of a sudden has this cleaning obsession and she's cleaning everything. You're wondering why, you know, why, why is she doing this? Why does she have this obsession? And then she says that, uh, she is giving the food to the woman upstairs. The woman upstairs doesn't eat it too much. So, you know, then you're you're kind of kind of get suspicious of that. Now, from the time this happens, there's a pool. Well, the pool at first is completely empty, but then they put water in it. Then they go swimming, and this is a very disturbing scene. As they're swimming, the Ben character is playing kind of rough with his son and even tries to drown him. Now, when that happens, the son manages to get away and he's kind of like, I don't know what came over me. I'm sorry. Then after this, he goes to bed and as he's sleeping, you see that he's at his mother's funeral and that there's a hearse driver and the hearse driver has this real weird smile. You've seen this smile in other things, you know, you know it was influenced by this movie. You know, you see this hearse driver with this weird smile. In fact, the uh, 1994 music video by Soundgarden, Black Hole Sun, you see a lot of characters taking on the facial expression of this hearse driver. And I think they were influenced by this movie when they did that. But uh, anyways, you know, you, you see this, you know, you, you wonder what's going on, and uh, then the next day, I, at some point, the Ben character cuts his hand, and then a light bulb gets repaired. So now you're kind of noticing a pattern here. It seems to be as people get hurt or express a lot of, like, violent emotion, the house is repairing itself. And that seems to be what is happening. So then what happens after this is you notice the Marion character is starting to dress in more like Victorian era attire. And another thing is, is there's all these pictures in an upstairs room right by where the mother is supposed to be you know, locked in the room. Right by there, the, in a room adjacent to it, there's this dresser, and there's all these Victorian-era pictures on the dresser. And there's this music box that the Marion character is playing, and you just see all these pictures of people, some from the, you could tell are clearly from, like, the early Victorian era, and some from later Victorian era, some from like the mid-20th century, 
So you're, you're kind of suspicious of this. Who are these people in these pictures? Are these people who stayed in the house? Are these people who died in the house? You know, you don't know. Now, uh, what then happens at some point is you do see the Marion character still dressed in Victorian attire take the food to the woman in the locked room, but then you see her eating it herself. And as she's eating it, this very eerie music comes on. The music in this is very eerie and good, you know. And as she's eating it, you hear this, you know, that kind of like horror movie music, and she's eating it. So now you're kind of wondering, is there even a person behind this locked door? You know, most likely not. You're wondering what's going on. And then what uh, happens is the Ben character then sees this hearse drive by and he sees the hearse character drive by kind of right in front of the house, uh, a little away from the house. And he just, he sees the character, the character is just in the car car stops and this character is just smiling at him in a very weird way. And then, you know, I think he just kind of shakes his head and then he looks again and it's gone. Now you're wondering, is this all in his head? Is this some sort of a ghostly image? What's going on here? Is this some kind of fear that he always had and now being at this house, the energy of this house is somehow amplifying this fear? You don't know. And that's what makes this good. That's what makes movies like this good. It's because you don't know. And you're not supposed to know. Because, you know, one of the things with a horror film that differs horror from, say, sci-fi or fantasy is the fact that it's kind of designed, if done right, it's designed to, you know, elicit fear. You know, that's what a horror movie is designed to do if done well. And that's what this movie does. You don't know who this hearse driver is. Anyways, what then happens after this is there's an incident where there's some like gas heater or something in the boy's room, in the son's room, and he starts hyperventilating. And immediately the Karen Black character... Marion accuses Elizabeth, you know, played by Betty Davis, of trying to, you know, harm the son, you know, and Betty Davis is kind of like, you know, you know, the Elizabeth character is like, how dare you accuse me of this, you know, and then you could see that she's, this Betty Davis character is getting sick, and the uh, Ben character, because, you know, she is his aunt, he, he's very concerned. And then she has a stroke and he's right there and she dies. Well, what then happens is the hearse driver comes right into the room with a casket. So now you're wondering, is this hearse driver the Grim Reaper? You know, you don't know. And then the next scene is they're at a funeral and the... Marion, Karen Black character, did not attend the funeral. So you're kind of like, well, why didn't she attend this, you know, funeral? But, you know, she didn't. And then she walks into this, like, uh, greenhouse. And before all the plants were, half of them were, like, dead. You know, there were a few of them that looked like they were partially alive. But now they're all alive, and there's all these flowers in this greenhouse. So you even more clearly see that this house is rejuvenating itself based upon what's happening in it, based upon the pain these characters are experiencing. So then there's another scene where uh, this uh, Ben character is now kind of getting suspicious, you know, and he's wondering you know, what has gotten into this, his wife, you know, Marion, what, what, what's going on here? Why is she wearing this Victorian era clothing? 
you know, what's going on. There's even some mention of her hair starting to turn gray. And he's just wondering what's going on. She seems to be like, you know, every, everything's all right. But uh, he's getting more suspicious. Well, then around this time, I know the son goes for a swim again. And as he goes for a swim, the water gets real violent. Re re real violent. And uh, the uh, Ben character is trying to... Uh, save his son but for whatever reason he can't get out of the chair to save him so the marion character jumps in and uh eventually you know he realizes we have to get out of here you know we, we have to get out of this house so you know he wants his whole family to leave to get in the car so they get in the car to leave and as they're trying to leave, a tree falls in front of the car. And all these weeds are like grabbing his leg. And they can't seem to leave. He then looks at his wife, Marion, and she's like transformed into this purse driver again. You know, see that face, although now it's right next to him and he's just like petrified. Marion takes him back to the house, calls a doctor. And, uh, you know, I don't know, there's... Doctor's there for a little bit and then leaves. Then I think he's kind of okay again, but, you know, still terrified at what's going on. So finally he's like, we have to get out of here. We have to leave. So this time the Marion character, you know, Karen Black agrees. Okay, you know what? I think you're right. Maybe we should leave. And then they get in the car to leave. And she goes, could I just say goodbye to, you know, the woman that was in this locked room? And he's like, you know, they had never seen the woman in this locked room. Even at one point, the Betty Davis character, when she was alive, was trying to see if she could meet this woman. And the Karen Black character wouldn't let her into the room. So you're wondering, now you're really wondering... If there's even anyone in there, what is going on? Who is in this room behind this locked door? That's a question you're asking. You really want to know. And then the Karen Black character, Marion, goes back into the house and she's not coming out. So now, you know, the Oliver Reed character, Ben, is very suspicious. So he goes in, he goes up to this room that's always locked, although this time he turns the knob and it opens. And then he walks into the room and he sees this woman sitting in a chair looking out a window. Again, she's wearing Victorian era attire. Her hair is all gray. He walks closer to her. He's wondering what's going on. He's like, who are you? She turns around and he could see that it's Marion, but it appears to be Marion possessed by some sort of an entity. You, you don't know what, you know, some kind of evil spirit or demon. And then the next scene is this guy just diving headfirst straight out of the window of this house, you know, straight out of the window that the woman was looking out of and he lands head first into the windshield of the car and they kind of overdid i think this scene because the next scene is uh, his face is covered in blood they did it in kind of a sick way i didn't think they needed to do that but you know back in this time they, they would use a lot of blood for these kinds of scenes and they would kind of make these death scenes look as sick as they could a lot of the time. And that's clearly what they did here. They, they might have overdone that. But still, nonetheless, that happens. Now the kid is freaking out. His dad just landed headfirst in the windshield of the car, and he's running around the house, and then the whole house starts uh, crumbling. Now another thing that happens at some point of the house was that you could see that the shingles were coming off of the house and underneath the shingles that were coming off, there's a new roof. 
you could also see the paneling, the wood paneling coming off, and there's completely new wood paneling. So as all these people in the house, you know, is they were all scared, and deathly afraid of what was going on, and all this fear and death, the uh, house is becoming completely rejuvenated, you know, completely like renovated, like brand new. And then, you know, the chimney falls on this kid. And then the last scene is the scene in the room with the pictures. And now you see on the desk a picture of the Betty Davis character, Elizabeth. You also see Ben, a picture of Ben. And then you see a picture of the kid. So there's these new pictures there. And uh, then you immediately kind of assume that most likely the mother that the Burgess Meredith character and his sister were talking about, that their mother, you know, may have been this entity. They were referring to this entity that possessed this Karen Black character, Marion. And then the movie ends. That's the end of the movie. Now, like I said, in a lot of ways, this is kind of like proto-Shining. You know, you would have other movies that would be similar to this. I think it's underrated. I've heard a little bit about it, enough to get me curious. But uh, you don't really hear people talk about it too much. I highly recommend it. Like I said, it's slow moving, but you're never bored. At least I wasn't. I was never bored. I had to watch it twice before I did this video just to really kind of uh, take everything in. I think I missed a few things, but then when I saw it a second time, you know, it all kind of came together. and was much more clear. But, uh, yeah, definitely something I recommend. Like I said, there is a book as well. Book is very similar, I'm told, to the movie. I haven't read the book, but I'm told the book goes into a little more detail of the characters. It, it does explain that the Ben character is uh, a teacher, which they don't explain in the movie. And, you know, this is his summer break. So it does get into that and, you know, explains a little bit, I think, of how they want to get away from the city and go out to the countryside somewhere. So, yeah, that's uh, the movie Burnt Offerings. If you watched this video, you know, as always, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you watch this video, have a good night.